Hi everyone, it's Fepikuno and today I want to tell you about my ninjas team. So ninjas is usually thought of as a low ladder Pokemon um, and you know it's despised by everyone who is trying to ladder properly um, but I actually managed to top the ladder with it and I think it's uh, really interesting to do that because most ladder players are well prepared uh, with their phases um, but that's the point of this team. I intend to break past these phases and uh, let my recipient sweep. So let's dive right into it. Uh, ninjas need Sword Stance, Baton Pass and Substitute, and a Lychee Berry to pass the boost. Um, and I've given it a bit of bulk to survive uh, Blissey's Ice Beam. Um, so nothing special here, but let's talk about the receiver. So Metagross is what I chose and uh, it's not the most common receiver. I mean usually people think of speed receivers as something like Marowak, uh, which is natural because it's uh, you know, strong and also um, with a sword stance uh, that it can actually use, um, you know, Metagross has to rely on the pass. Uh, you know, um, Marowak can simply just sweep on its own. But I've decided to use Metagross because 1. Metagross is allowed to equip Lumberry. Um, uh, Marowak uh, needs to rely on Thick Club uh, to get its damage. So uh, Metagross doesn't need that and it's not as susceptible to stuff like uh, Gengar firing off Will-O-Wisp or say you know an opponent uh, say toxicking uh, Marowak on the switch, sorry, on the baton pass, and then using Protect Mons to wear Marowak down. Another advantage of Metagross is Clear Body. So, uh, Clear Body uh, basically stops Intimidate spam from ruining your sweep, you know, stuff like Salamence and Gyarados. Uh, so, that's kind of nice. Um, you know, you can just keep hitting without worrying. Uh, there's also the possibility of compounding damage with Meteor Mesh. I mean, you know, it doesn't seem like a reliable way to win, but uh, think about it, if, if you hit two Meteor Meshes, that's like uh, something like a 36% chance. It's not that low. And sometimes you can get yourself into those situations where opponents try to sack Mons uh, in order to, say, regain health on Swampert or something. Um, finally, uh, it's good coverage, you know, Meteor Mesh hits almost anything um, uh, compared to Marowak, like, uh, which, you know, you can't, you can't do any damage using Earthquake to the flying type mons. Um, so that means that uh, I can run a move like Substitute, okay, and uh, that allows me to do some uh, Interesting things like say if Gengar will always on the switch, um, gets healed by Lumberry. Now the Gengar is probably going to rely on Meteor Mash missing, um, so it's probably going to will wisp again. And on that turn, you substitute, uh, which not only protects you from will wisp but also protects you from missing. You know if you need, uh, if you need to hit like a Salamence at the threat of being KO'd. Uh, at least you have two chances to fire off uh, Meteor Mesh. Okay, um, and because this is a Sweeper Metagross, I'm going to give it Rock Slide, uh, which helps to beat Zepdos and Motrus, and it's also a more accurate move than Meteor Mesh. So, uh, you know, accuracy basically counts. You don't want uh, to have your sweep ruined due to having to hit two Flying Mons, that compounds to an accuracy about of about 80% with Rock Slide already. So um, fortunately, uh, Metagross itself is kind of bulky, so it can survive a hit. Uh, and Substitute helps to uh, prevent the status from really affecting it. Okay, so now that we've gotten Ninjask and the Receiver down, let's talk about what walls this. Uh, off the top of my head, there's Swampert and there's Phasers. Now, uh, for Swampert, I kind of uh, want to lure it down, and I'm going to use uh, DD HP Grass Terranitar. 
Um, so this will bring Swampert comfortably to about maybe uh, 60%, no, uh, 50% HP. Um, and, uh, you know, if ninjas can get a boost that's uh, good enough for Metagross to sweep, or at least try to fish for the Meteor Mesh raises later on. Um, now, let's talk about the phasers. So, there are so many phases in the meta game Skarmory, Tyranitar, Zapdos, Moltres, Suicune, Swampert, and Jolteon. Um, so, let's deal, with Sorry, let's deal with Skarmory first. Um, Skarmory is removed by Magneton. And here, I am going for the Timid set uh, because uh, I don't want to lose to Yolo Skarm. And also because there are occasions where ninjas speed passing to Magneton uh, might actually be useful. Um, the other reason for having the timid set is that Magneton can be surprisingly good at harassing your opponent um, so that your ninjas can get uh, free subs up. What I mean is that if you run Thunder Wave and Swagger, uh, you are basically compounding like a 50% hit rate with a 75% hit rate. Uh, and on top of that, compound that across multiple substitutes, um, you're more likely than not to get ninjas to set up with free sword stance. Um, and having the speed helps you to do this against stuff like Jirachi and Celebi. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, I'm just going to use Hidden Power Grass, as I said, because I have a Swampert weakness, I can't really uh, switch into it. Um, and, uh, you know, I am not that afraid of Fortress, as you'll soon see. Um, okay, so now I need to remove Tyranitar, and uh, my choice here is uh, Curse Boom Snorlax. And that is, um, I mean, Curse Boom Snorlax is one of my favorite Snorlax sets because it's one of the few things in the middle game that uh, consistently lures Tyranitar and Metagross. Now, uh, of course, it's important to lure Roar Tyranitar, which is frequently seen on Pursuit sets. Um, but it's also consistent because Magneton has already removed Skarmory. So now Snorlax can be dedicated to removing Tyranitar or Metagross. Um, and uh, why is removing Metagross important? Now, usually Metagross acts as a secondary physical check. So you have Swampert, you have Metagross, and sometimes people send Metagross out first to take the Tyranitar, in which case um, that would be really bad because you know you still have the Swampert that's lying around to wall Metagross. Um, it's not, yeah, that's not the best idea. So, um, being able to remove Metagross is sometimes important for Tyranitar to get its HP grass directed at Swampert. Okay, the last good thing about Snorlax is that um, defensive Suicune teams uh, usually rely on roaring out Curse Legs uh, to beat it, especially if the Skarmory is removed. So, um, by, by, by booming on Suicune, you have removed the phaser that stops ninjas from passing. So that's good too. Okay, now um, we still need to deal with Zapdos, Moltres, uh, and Jolteon. So uh, this is perhaps the most, um, this is perhaps the biggest innovation of this team. So quite a while back, I created this Salak Berry Vaporeon set. Uh, and passed it to a few players like uh, the Linear Curve and Astamatitos, who used it in uh, Kellas Invitational 3. Um, and the idea behind this set is that Vaporeon has just enough uh, has just enough HP to take a Thunderbolt from Timid Zepdos. Uh, so with uh, the bulk for Thunderbolt, with the minimal out for Thunderbolt it actually brings it into Salad range. So you can stay in on Zipdos, Ice Beam it, uh, and force it to switch out uh, on the first turn. And that's really nice because it puts Zepdos into a range where ninjas can finish it off and 
that's what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm going to put Hidden Power Rock on Ninjas because that stops Zepdos um, from roaring and it also stops Moltres. Um, and the same can be said of Jolteon. So if Vaporeon is able to lure Jolteon it uh, for the, th uh, you know, to chip it, then Ninjas can finish it off with Hidden Power Rock too. Uh, now what about offensives we could? Uh, so people who lead offensive Suicune tend to want to trade with it. Uh, you know, frequently people who lead offensive Suicune like Snorlax coming in so that they can hydro pump it to death uh, and force it to boom, um, which is great for me because then I don't have to be roared out. But for people who want to leave Suicune uh, to over the mid game, um, they would tend to lead something else and switch Suicune in. So uh, Vaporeon is actually really strong. Like this special attack, uh, combined with the power of Hydro Pump, it's able to do something like 25% to offensive Suicune. So with that kind of chip, you kind of incline Suicune to um, try to trade with Snorlax anyway in the mid game. It's not like they are, you know, it's not like Suicune is going to be particularly useful unless it has hidden power grass or something. Um, so uh, the odds are you'll be able to lure Suicune out, offensive Suicune out, and remove it anyway. Admittedly, Roar Swampert is a bit hard to deal with um, because even a 50% Swampert uh, that Tyranitar forced out earlier, you know, it completely walls ninjas. So that's just something that I have to take. Um, you know, I'm using a flawed Pokemon, I can't expect to win every single matchup, but um, I think this is as good as it gets. Okay, uh, one last thing is uh, that ninjas actually, by virtue of having a multiple of 16 HP, it's not going to be able to use Substitute down to 25% in Sand. In fact, if you try to do that, Ninjas will just get KO'd. So sometimes it's important, especially when you need to set up in Sand, to get a Sword Stuns boost to get the extra turn, um, or uh, for Ninjas to make an intermediate pass to like, say, Magneton or something. So that's just an intricacy of the team. Um, but you can see how uh, Ninjas uh, has the flexibility to pass not only the Metagross, I mean usually that would be done 95% of the time or something, but sometimes Tyranitar or even Magneton is just a win condition. Okay, so uh, have I filled in all the moves? Uh, well, for Snorlax, um, really uh, Curse and Self-Destruct are the most important moves. I use Body Slam and Shadow Ball. Um, Shadow Ball because I need to hit Gengar. Um, now, Earthquake could really just go over Body Slam, but again, you want to make sure you're completely removing um, Roar Tyranitar, not just chipping it, because that will still stop Ninjas from sweeping. Okay, so uh, this is the team, and next I will show you some ladder games uh, where Ninjas and Metagross basically sweep. Okay, so here's the first battle that I want to feature. Um, so let's get right into it. So this is the lead Zapdos matchup that I was hoping to get uh, with Vaporeon and now you can see in action. Thunderbolt brings Vaporeon into Salak range. Okay, I Ice Beam it, chipping it. Okay, Salak very activates. Now I force it out. Uh, no, I actually KO it. Great. Um, now Suicune comes in and I go to Snorlax. Uh, yep, it tried to uh, use HP Grass on me. Um, and now I actually am going to curse and we'll see what happens next. Yeah, so I think what happened here was that uh, the opponent might have thought that I was interested in you know, focus punching a Suicune that hasn't been set up. 
uh, but here instead I curse and this puts the opponent in a really uh, difficult position where he now has to go to his physical wall which is Metagross okay um, and now I just boom to remove Metagross which is nice uh, okay so now the next thing I want to do is to get Tyranitar in to set up sand uh, it helps to retain the chip knowing that um, my Vaporeon might have to face Suicune uh, next um, so bringing Sui keeping the damage on Suicune is kind of important here uh, so I see a Celebi which came in to presumably take my Vaporeon and now I Dragon Dance on it and this is exactly what I meant by um, having Curse self-destruct Snorlax is good um, because Snorlax lures and chips Metagross uh, and in this case removed it so the opponent has no choice but to send Suicune in now I mean if this was a raw Suicune it would have been bad for my Ninjask and I haven't revealed Ninjask yet so uh, he took the bait um, anyway and he uh, and Tyranitar is basically removing Suicune over here Okay, so I get KO'd because I'm not plus speed. Right, so I send in Magneton um, because I feel like, well, this is about the time where I should try to at least get uh, get a boost, uh, sorry, get uh, the T-Waves and the Swaggers in. That is probably an offensive Celebi uh, and, you know, if I don't end up uh, if I don't end up T waving it, uh, um, you know, I mean, if I end up T waving it, I actually get uh, ninjas to set up on it. Um, but if the last is a dark trio, then it also gives me a chance for ninjas to set up. So either way, it's good for me to send Magneton in to uh, take uh, to get the opponent to take the bait. So indeed, he goes to dark trio, um, and that's perfect. Alright, so I Swords Dance on the Switch. Okay, so one thing I want you to notice over here is that um, I started out bringing Din just get full HP under sand and I needed uh, to use sword stuns um, to expand the turn so that I can get ninjas to activate the lychee berry um, so if I did not have that extra turn it means ninjas would basically be getting down to 32% in which case it would sub down to 6% and just get KO'd so having an extra turn is really important uh, for getting the sweep, or uh, rather getting the lychee boost uh, to aid the sweep. Alright, so uh, this is basically game. Alright. So let's go to the next game. Um, now, okay, so he leads Tyranitar, and uh, a lot of people have a tendency when using uh, Vaporeon to substitute on the first turn, but I think that's not a good move for this team because uh, first. There is always the possibility that the opponent is going to anticipate the sub and just uh, stay in with Tyranitar. In which case, getting the Hydro Pump will, you know, be really useful. Um, and if they go to Blissey, well, then at least it's passive. Uh, you know, so 
you don't really lose much from not getting the extra sub, you can actually switch out to Snorlax. Um, you know, there, there, there really isn't a good reason to sub on such an offensive team. You sometimes need the HP to survive hits from like Swampert and stuff. So I go for the Hydro Pump, he, he brings in Blissey. Okay. Okay, so right here, um, this is looking like a standard TSS team. And I'm just going to double switch to Magneton. Yeah, this is actually, um, it's actually quite good to use Magneton on this team because uh, if I'm leading Vaporeon, it seems like I am trying to do something hyper offensy and Vaporeon hits Skarmory really hard so it's not entirely expected to have a Magneton behind um, so uh, I think it's generally just good to make use of these redundancies to you know fool your opponent a bit okay here I actually go for the curse because you know it covers both Gengar and uh, Tyranitar but um, Unfortunately, I'm paralyzed. Uh, yeah, uh, paralyzed again. Okay, so I don't really have a choice here. Um, I have to boom because otherwise, um, Spikes is going to really hurt Snorlax and it won't get that second chance. Okay, so Starmie is really tough for me here, and um, I think uh, my Magneton is probably not going to survive Hydro Pump. So at this stage, I have to try my best to chip Starmie down, um, and hopefully Metagross will be able to complete the sweep. Uh, it's, it's definitely hard from here, um, but I think he doesn't realize that uh, my Vaporeon is modest, not timid. I did consider making it timid, um, but uh, you know, it's, it helps with this in, in matchups like this, but I guess uh, it's not something I can avoid over here. So uh, he goes to Blissey again, which is a saving grace for me. Yep, so now uh, expecting a Swampert last, I am simply uh, just going to DD up with uh, Tyranitar here. Uh, and it's a Metagross, which is even better. Alright, here is where I can conceivably make Magneton shine, um, you know, with like Thunder Wave and Swagger and stuff. Um, that's exactly what I'm going to do over here. I'm only going to try to reveal Swagger at the last moment so that, um, you know, my opponent can't really play around it. Yeah, I think my opponent is starting to suspect that something is up. Uh, it's not like there's much you can do about it. Okay, so I managed to fire off the swagger. Uh, okay, but this, uh, this doesn't help my case. Uh, Still, I have pretty good odds to sweep over here, as long as I win the 50-50s on the status with Blissey. 
uh, note that because I send Ninjask in without uh, an additional turn, I don't get to op uh, obtain the Lychee Berry boost. Now I'm banking on him to Will-O-Wisp on the switch here. Which he does. And now I'm going to exploit that uh, extra turn I get from Substitute. Yeah, I went for the mash raises here so I didn't have to be caught in like 50-50s. And I was rewarded. And so that's the game. Um, as you can see, I've risen pretty high on the ladder here. Okay, so in the last few minutes of this video, I want to show you my path to the top of the ladder. Um, so I actually landed on two different alts, uh, but I mean the first is my main. Um, I started off at around 1420. Uh, yeah, in this game I almost lost, but um, I swaggered the Heracross, uh, got the Sword Stance boost, and managed to KO it for the win. And that was because he had a raw perk, which was very annoying to me. Um, this is a different team, so... Again, a different team. Okay. Yep. It's a different team. Well, that was a really fast sweep. Different team. That's a Zomox team. Okay, this is the last game I played on this alt with this team because I was really tilted by um, getting critted at the end. Uh, as you can tell, like, I was about to pass to a Metagross and I got crit, so that wasn't very nice. Um, so I gave up for a while. Um, I was at 15... I was at 15.30. Um, later on, I started at around 15.38. You can tell I boom the Suicune over here to set up the cross sweep. Yep. Uh, yeah, not much to say over here. This is a really interesting battle where I ended up uh, sweeping with a Magneton. It's kind of funny. Um, so it does have users, you know, to pass the boost. Uh, yeah, um, and these are some friendly games, uh, and this is a ladder game, but it's Ion X, so I shouldn't share it. I actually lost to this guy, go. Uh, this is the guy who loves passing to Parish Song Celebi and uh, Alakazam. Fortunately, I did not fall prey. Okay, so uh, 
What's my rating now? 1597, okay. 16-16. Uh, 16-16. 16-23. Alright, 16-34, top the ladder. And uh, as proof, I will get on that uh, alt. Hmm. Um, ladder, ladder. Uh, oops, I got surpassed, but I did take a screenshot. Um, let's see. Okay, so, um, yep, I got surpassed today, but uh, just this morning, um, I was able to capture the screenshot. Uh, you can see uh, I'm at the top of the ladder, all just, or uh, mostly from the efforts of Ninjask. So thanks for watching, I really love um, building with uh, niche mons um, and doing well with them. They're not just, you know, like super inconsistent memes, I mean they're still inconsistent, but uh, at least they can win games. Well, thanks for watching. Leave your comments below.